What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac, and today I'm super stoked because I've got my friend Matt from the Nostalgic Neighborhood with me today. What's up, Matt? Hey, guys. How's Dude, it going, Isaac? man, I am super, super stoked because we've had lots of like behind the scenes conversations Mm-hmm. from everything from models to Pee Wee Herman uh, dinosaurs. And so I'm stoked to finally just get some one on one time with you, dude, where like no one's, uh, you know, pulling me away from my DM so I Sure, can just chit yeah. chat and get to know you, dude. Um, I'm just going to kind of give you like my what I know about you. Okay. Uh, I, I found you, I think the way most if, if my followers are following you, I think we all found you when you got like your trick star. Like I remember you getting Mm-hmm. that that bike, dude, and just watching your stoke and like going in and just like, man, I'm going to build this. I'm reliving this. That's the first place I saw your logo, got your vibe. And I was like, man, this is just good. This is just Awesome. good. Uh, I felt like I was like, we've never met, but I felt like I was watching my friend like open a Christmas, like a not Christmas, but like a birthday present. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, And yeah. like, it just took me right, right back to being a kid again, That's so man. awesome. So I love it. tell me, tell me about you. Uh, tell me, first of all, how you've hit your channels about what, a year and a half, two years. How long have you had And it's it? about a year and a half. Yeah. And, Okay. and we, we can get into the little bit of the story behind the channel. Um, if you want to talk a little bit of BMX first, but uh, that Hutch Trickstar was Yeah. the reason I started the channel. So I uh, bought that Love as that. a pre-order a couple of years ago. And um, it took, because of the pandemic, it took a long, much longer than it was supposed to, to, to arrive. And during that time, I was just so stoked. I, but I wanted to find more BMX, and especially more Hutch content. And it just wasn't out there. Yeah. And um, so I was like, hey, when I finally get the bike, I'm going to do an unboxing video just to share that with everybody because there's not I'm not seeing other people doing like this Hutch type of stuff. So that was the only reason I started the channel was to, to do a bike build. And then there's a story behind it taking forever and whatever. But yeah, that's kind of how I got started was because I wanted to share my excitement about that dream bike as a kid that I knew I could never have as a kid, but Yeah. finally made that dream come true. Yep. Bro, that's that's dope. I love that because I mean that's my my very first video was just me sitting in front of my minivan talking about my brand new big ripper with the same kind of a vibe. I just wanted to share like dudes, they make these big BMX bikes. Like of course everyone that, that sees this now is like of course they do. Right, But for right. for someone like me, I work in tech, dude, and I'm not around BMX all the time in 20 2019 at the end of that year like when I got Mm-hmm. my bike. So I had no idea, dude. I thought it was just like, and Brian from Tuesday's Turn is going to roast me on this. But like, I for at my age, I thought it was just like road bikes, angry dentists, and or the other extreme, which is like, that's the way they are here, dude. Like you see them on, on the bike pass and they are so aggressive. They're, Yeah, they, yeah, and no, no joke. Yeah. no joy in their face at all. And so, and they just look like dentists. I don't know. But anyway, I love, I love you guys. If you're road bike guys. But, um, I, dude, or mountain biking, which is like, that's 10 grand in a bike, which I'm not prepared to do at all. As a dad, I can't, I can spend a grand. That's a lot, dude, to spend on myself as a Yeah, dad, yeah, for sure. bro. So I just, I didn't fit anywhere in, in BMX. And so I just never, I didn't go into bike shops. Uh, Mm -hmm. I never saw ride outs come through. Uh, I was at home, dude. I was at home. I was a couch potato. So I wasn't even Yeah, going yeah. out and doing anything fun, dude. I think I was... 270 at the time like i was a big dude bro Yeah. and uh I, I i found this bmx bike and i was so stoked just to be like you guys if Check you're watching it out. this this Yeah. they make big bmx bikes like here like you're like hey check it out i gotta un- Mm-hmm. unbox this trickstar was a trickstar like your favorite bike growing up as well or Um, gt well, yeah, so the, my, so a little bit about my background in, in bikes or BMX. yeah So I was just like any other kid, eighties kid, uh, right. Our bike was our first, you know, sense of adventure, like to get away from the first taste of freedom, right. You could get more than a block or two away from the house and Right. you start to explore. And then the, you meet up with the neighborhood kids. And that's why I call it the nostalgic neighborhood. Cause for me, it was all about the kids. I think you were, when you were chatting with, uh, Kevin, you guys called it like maybe the Goonies squad or something like Yeah. that, but it was like your group of, of kids, you know, and then we would go on adventures. We would ride bikes out in the woods and blaze trails and make tracks at like the abandoned, you know, construction site at the end of the neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. So I grew up just riding bikes. We were in a small town. There weren't like racetracks or anything around. And so for us, it was just like our bike was just 
you know, it was just part of growing up. And once we got a little bit older, uh, we started to be inter you know, the movie rad and all that. We got interested in freestyle and, uh, my parents had no interest in buying me. I had a team Murray from like Kmart or something like that. Yep. And uh, at one point, you know, my friends at that, then they had my, one of my best friends had a GT pro performer in 85. Another one had a red line. Another one had a mongoose. And I had this crappy team Murray. Anyway, my dad was on vacation or like at work or something. And I convinced my mom to get me a Huffy Sigma. You know, I was at least kind Oh, of looking dude. the part. Yeah. So Yeah. that was my first like freestyle bike. And then I don't know, maybe a couple of years later, I convinced my dad finally on my birthday to get me a Dino Detour. I think it was like maybe an 87, 87, probably 87. What color And was so it? I rode that for a while. But by then, skateboarding had become like the, the trendy thing. And uh, I got into skateboarding. And so skateboarding, my bike just became the vehicle to get to the skate spots across town and stuff. And um, so, yeah, I grew up loving BMX bikes and riding, but never like, you know, I didn't race at a track. We were just neighborhood kids. You know, we just had a lot of fun. I'm sure like most guys our age, that's part of, you know, their, their upbringing. Um, but yeah, Yeah. so then I got into mountain biking really heavily in college And um, in the you know early mid '90s, I rode like every day for like five years, and then uh, we moved away from uh, where I was at in college, and there weren't mountain biking trails, and I just didn't ride a bike for like 20 years really. And then Yeah. it was like 2017, I got the 26 inch GT uh, performer, the you know the big bike, and um, because. I wanted, so your first question, what did I have? Did I have a GT or whatever back in the day? I always wanted the the GT uh, pro performer like my buddy, and I just never did. So I got that. But what I really wanted as a kid, like when we looked at, we'd ride up to the grocery store and look at the magazines and everything. I lusted after those Hutch trick stars, man. Like that was, that was the pipe dream. I knew it was never going to happen. And, um, so yeah, I didn't even dare like to dream too heavily about a trick star, but, um, when I saw in 2021, they were re, uh, re popping that re, you know, and doing a replica of the eighties version with the OG technology and stuff. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And uh, that's when I started to get really interested and I rode the, the GT performer, the 26 inch quite a bit, um, during the pandemic. It, I mean, it came as all black parts. So the blue Maui blue frame, but the. The wheels, the spokes, the rims, the seat, the seat, everything was black. And I'm like, why? It should be white, you know? Right, right. So during the pandemic, I slowly swapped parts out. I think that's how I found your channel. I was looking to, you know, read up on some different parts. I can't remember exactly. But then I started like, you know, on YouTube searching for big BMX bikes and found Yeah. you and Craig and the the podcast that you and that like really sucked me in during the pandemic. I was like, this is cool. Dude, So, that's awesome. Thanks yeah. for thanks for checking it out. Yeah, I mean, that was that got us through the pandemic too, bro. Like Yeah. it was there was nothing to do. And and I mean, the, the first news that came out was like, we're all going to die, you know? So I was Right. like, Let's go ride well, our bikes. yeah, I guess I'm, I live here in this room now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just wild. I was like, well, you know, everyone, everyone's home right now. So it's probably easy to talk to people. And so I was, I, it was, I was just hail Mary every day with an email to somebody just like, Hey, you want to come get interviewed on my podcast? <laughs> I used Yeah, to ride well, you guys bikes. were, <laughs> you guys did. I mean, you're like one of the OGs in terms of YouTube uh, bike content that's been consistent. There's a lot of guys who make really cool stuff um, and they're still around, but they, some of them just pop in like once every couple of months or whatever. And I've always appreciated that you've just been there through the thick and thin for, I don't know, is it four, five, six years now, just consistently showing up. And Right. uh, Dude, that's I appreciate awesome. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Yeah. There's, it's been, it's been a journey, right? It's been fun. It's been just a wild, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> and yeah. I, I was just thinking our bikes got us, you, you nailed it. Our bikes got us Mm -hmm. to where we want to go. And it, it's not like I had a freestyle bike. I had a bike that I rode jump like the same freestyle bike. was the one that would go to the rate to the the Stockton fairgrounds and Right, ride around. right. I'd have to take the pegs off, but you know, and that was the same exact bike that I was jumping into a little lake. Cause I wanted to be like the Mountain Dew. We So were much grateful fun. for it too. Yeah. There's Even just mine. so much, there's so Yeah. much more to it though. Dude. That's, that's the thing. Like when I, when I, this is what I like about your channel is like fingerboards, skateboards, Pee Wee Herman. Like I'm waiting for like a, a swatch roundup or something from you next. Do you know what I mean? Cause like, Yeah. You, you really do, dude. The things that you show are really my childhood and the fond stuff about my childhood. Um, 
Have you always just been hardcore 80s guy or is it like the nostalgia? Because I think we've had a rebirth of nostalgia, mm -hmm. especially for 80s stuff. And it's, I've it's always been a kid at heart. Like, you know, that whole, what is it? Toys R Us. I don't want to grow up, you know, whatever. Right. Like when I was in college, I was uh, back in, what was that? 96 or so? Star Wars, they started re-releasing the action figures. Oh, yeah, I yeah. had such a Power of the Force. for those and the G.I. Joe guys when I was little that I started buying, you know, I'm like 22, 23. I don't know how old I was, you know, early college or late college. And sure. I was buying all these toys, you know, the lightsabers and, yeah. you know, all the, the action figures and stuff. Do you and remember then, the Power of the Force ones, dude? They were yeah, like the all power the, the, the muscle ones, like Princess Leia looked like a bodybuilder. Yeah, so all of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had like... I had so like ridiculous, like yeah, I could get I a couple those. of really nice bikes right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I've sold them all off on eBay through the years, but um, yeah, I right. was into that. Um, I don't know if you rem uh, if you remember, actually, I got a couple here, uh, Playmobil toys. Um, oh, for sure, dude. Yeah, here. but uh, I remember getting these in Happy Meals when I was oh, a yeah. kid with my buddies, and uh, we had a ton of these. And then I got a set for Christmas. So anyway, I just always had nostalgia for these. And so did my wife, it turns out. And when we first got married, that was one of the cool things that we had in common is we just had a weird infatuation with these Playmobil toys. And we started buying them before we had kids and like a, a huge collection. So all <laughs> nice. of the trains and the nights. And uh, so, yeah, I've always enjoyed like toys and like, the 80s the movies. And, what's that? Did you get the castle? Yeah, we've I've got the castle. I've we've got a couple oh. of the how the Victorian houses. I've got a couple of the pirate ships and yeah, oh. all the little houses, the medieval houses that go with the castle and stuff. What, I was really into it, like fifteen. What years. was your what was your favorite growing up toy? Eighties toy? Like do you growing did you up? Have a... the, probably the toy I and it's funny because that's the ones I don't collect. But GI Joe, like I loved yeah. Star Wars as a kid and I played with them quite a bit, but around 80 probably 83 84 in like the third grade i got really into gi joe guys and the, my man that, maybe some transformers but gi joe probably is my favorite all right let's talk dude i i okay so mine was star wars obviously because uh, mm -hmm. i was five star wars was the first movie i saw i had no idea like they had colored moving pictures up <laughs> to that point yeah. we were poor bro and like the TV set that we had at home was like 15 inches, black and white, no cable. And so Star Wars, dude, you went to the movie and you see that and it's like, you know, kind of mind blowing. It, yeah. It's the whole wall and people are smoking because it's the seventies and like, mm -hmm. but they were in the smoking section. So it was okay. I wasn't hurt. You weren't hurt <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, dude, it was crazy. But like that, that like Star Wars toys. Uh, transitioned into, I remember I was at Mervyn's, which was in California. That was like our department store. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at Mervyn's and I saw G.I. Joe and on the back, dude, they had like the bio and there was a laser guy. I was like, he's pretty cool. I think his name was Laser. Um, And his thing, his hometown was Lodi. And I was like, oh, you're like, no way. Yeah, bro. I was like, mom, I <laughs> absolutely have to look, it's Lodi. I have to have this. And she's like, cool, go ahead. So that was that was my entrance into GI Joe, dude. Mm -hmm. And then I got so hooked. The only comic book I ever read in my entire life, like comics, were big with every kid in my clique except for me. And I got into the uh, the GI Joe comics, mm -hmm. um, even the Transformer like crossover thing they did. Like I was into GI Joe. Yeah, that was like I still thing. have most of my comic books from when I was a kid. And I uh, was not, I was similar. I wasn't into superheroes. I still, I have a, quite a few superheroes ones, but I've got yeah. probably 10 or so GI Joe ones from that I actually had when I was a kid. And I liked like uh, Richie Rich and Archie and just all yep. those just like fun um, Mad Balls. I still got a couple of Mad Balls comic books. You remember those like soft like toys and they had faces on them? And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, I loved those things. Yeah. Dude, that's so rad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for all of it, right? Um, yeah. But like, what was your favorite GI Joe? Do you remember? Like, you had a favorite? Uh I, I guess it was just. Well, I forget what his name was. Like, 
just the one everybody called him gi joe but he was like uh, i forget what his name was Hawkeye? um Was it like Hawk no or something? he he was uh he had like the just the he was in just like the green outfit and he had the i forget what his like i said i didn't really get into them as an adult but as a kid Right. that's that's what i loved um but yeah i had I don't remember i mean i their had names. the jeep with that dude in <laughs> it yeah. and i had you know the the um i forget i'm not into military so i don't remember what the the Yeah. aircraft was the jet fighter um i don't Like remember F-16 or something? Yeah, yeah something sure. like that i had that i had the helicopter i had the little fort like you would drive like the tank in and like pull it and it would like lift it up into place and Oh, hell yeah. um i had the aircraft carrier and then i had a whole bunch of the the fig You i had actually the aircraft carrier? That thing was like a whole bedroom. No, 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 no. I'm so sorry. I did not have the aircraft Oh, carrier. The uh-oh. hovercraft. Oh, Uh, hovercraft, yeah, just yeah, my yeah. brain's not. This is the guy. This is, um, I don't know if, let me cover my face so my camera focuses. Uh, Chuck it's Norris. just not, <laughs> yeah, um, That's Chuck Norris. yeah, totally. But um, this, this, I have like three guys left from when I was a kid. This is one of them. <laughs> The others probably are buried in my the house that I grew up in in the backyard somewhere because right? you know you make like little trenches and, and you know they're probably yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I could go back in that old house, the metal yeah. detector, and see if, sneak in in the night when the neighbor you know they'd be like, "What's that guy out there doing?" You're like, it's cool. I'm just looking for Joe. I'm just Six. looking for my old GI No. Joe guys. <laughs> yeah, I got, got bills to pay. Yeah. Um, I I think my favorites were Destro, because Uh-huh, he had yeah. he had the silver face. Silver face. And then I think there's a mail away guy that you could get that changed color, like it was like a mood ring plastic Yeah, and there was a, chameleon guy. Z yeah, and Zartan. like his face, his face would change, like, That was uh, it. Turn purple or white or yeah, I don't yeah, remember. I remember that. I forget what his name, but he had like a little mask that you could like, it was in a backpack and you open it up and then like you put it on his face, I think. That guy was so dope, dude. Okay. Yeah. And the dreadnoughts Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, I was into all that, dude. I loved it. And then it's just like one day you're like, man, I'm not into toys anymore. Yeah, that's kind Like of, it yeah. was, Was I, uh, I mean, it. bikes, it was bikes for me, dude. Bikes kind of took me away from toys because I was like, don't really have time. You know, I was like, my, my shins hurt. <laughs> you know, like, just different, different problems. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Yeah, Um, do you, what was your, what was like your favorite movie growing up? yeah. <laughs> For sure. Uh, I don't know, probably, you know, as a kid, Star Wars. I mean, it's cliche, but I would say Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Karate Kid, you know, First Blood. Yep. And of course, the Pee Wee, like Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I loved partly because of the bikes in it and just partly because of the silliness. I just love silly, like stupid humor. And that movie, like you either get it or you don't. And it is Right. just so clever. Like uh, Phil Hartman, I, I don't know if you know that, but he helped write the script with it. And Oh, um, really? him and Pee Wee were like, or Paul Rubens, like tight. Like, uh, yeah, there. It, it is. I just feel like it's clever. It's not just like, P this you know Pee Wee guy being stupid like the it's really clever the humor Yeah, in there it's really really clever and I love I, it. I'm with you, man. I enjoyed it. I, I would say like for me, like my kid movies were the same, right? It was Mm like hmm. the poltergeist, I think was probably the scariest thing that I enjoyed ET. Uh, Yeah, E.T. and then for sure. obviously star Wars, star Wars is huge for me, dude. Mm hmm. Um, so star Wars, Indiana Jones, I didn't get into as much. I Um, loved it. Yeah. yeah, I just, I know people loved it, dude. And, and, I don't know what what else. I mean, oh, Never Ending Story was a big one too. Oh, for sure. Dark Crystal, like any Labyrinth. of those, like Yeah. yeah, Never Ending Story, Labyrinth. uh, Uh, Labyrinth. what was the legend that had Tom Cruise before he was like a big star? Oh, it, For sure. Time Bandits, man. Oh, You remember that? Time Bandits, Oh, dude, yeah. on HBO. Yeah, I was a latchkey Yeah. kid, dude. So my like somehow I talked my mom when cable came out to like, can I get HBO for the summer? And, <laughs> you it's know, awesome. it was like Time Bandits would play all day during the day. And then, uh, man, they had some pretty raunchy ones, too. I remember there was like some Mel Brooks, like History of the World or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember they play that during the day. yeah But yeah, yeah dude. Um, so skateboarding took off for you after your your BMX kind of era. Right. yeah So yeah for sure who um are some of your like favorite skateboard like heroes at the time? At the time, back in the 80s, um, again, cliche, but it would have been Tony Hawk and Christian Asoy. Those were like Yeah. the biggest, you know, names. They were our age though. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, they're a little bit older. Uh, I, I just turned 50, and I think Yeah. uh, they're like, 
maybe in their late fifties now. So like, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Co Tony Hawk, Christian Asoy, uh, Gator on the vision team. And that guy ended up just, he committed, he murdered somebody. And so yeah. it's like sucks. Cause that was my first skateboard and I've got such nostalgia, such a great design. And it's like, you just, you know, like you, you just gotta separate robs it, the man. joy yeah. of it a bit. Yeah. It do it does. It does. It's just one of those things like, cause I've had, I've had moments like that with BMX, right. Where you're like, you know, not with, not with necessarily like murder or anything like that, but just when, when I've met a lot of my heroes and sometimes they're great mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not dude. And yeah. it's, it's, it's been a really tough lesson to like, man, like just respect the writing, respect the memory of like what they, what they've con like their contributions and stuff like that. But yeah. for the most part, everyone's cool, but it's just yeah. like, sometimes you'll run into someone that's not, or uh like a, a a big one for me dude i think i just like craig grosso like i i he was one of my favorite writers growing up uh he's still around but he's just he struggles man he's battling mm, yeah, um, addiction yeah. you know and he's very upfront about it and like for me dude i think that's one that's like really hard for me because i just want like you just want to like i don't know like yeah. love that just love the the give them your strength or something i don't know mm. what I don't know how to describe the feeling you have when you see someone struggling. That's like, you know, one of your heroes and you're yeah, like, I want yeah. to do whatever I possibly can. Yeah. That is, you know, and that it's, is it's cool. hard, man, but just, you got to separate like the yeah. skater okay. from the, the scandal. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So turning from the dark side of people like that, my uh, second <laughs> skateboard that I ever had was Kevin Staub. It was a pirate. It was from Sims. And uh, so here's the opposite story. That guy is the coolest guy ever. And um, he was a big, I don't know if you remember him at all from the skateboard sure. era, but he for was sure. known for like doing some of the best like backside ollies on, on the vert ramps and just floating. Uh, just amazing guy. And so as a kid, I loved him. I, like I said, that was my second skateboard, the pirate graphic. I loved it. Um, and then when I got back into skating as an adult, I got his reproduction deck and I skated that and just, you know, anyway, I had the chance to meet him a couple of times and it's been like 10 years now. And yeah. he's like the most humble, just friendly down to earth guy. And I made a, uh, a, a YouTube video about, a, about some of those interactions with him like a year ago. And I think I made a reel with it and he ended up following me and I was like, Hey, that's really cool. Well, uh, about two weeks ago, he DM'd me on Instagram and he was like, Hey Matt, what's your address? I want to send you something. And I'm like, uh, uh, gave him my address. And I was kind of just, well, what's up, you know, type thing. And anyway, he, he sent me this skateboard. So Dude, he's, that's uh, rad. Since graphics that he did back in the eighties. And this one is a reimagining, but, um, just out of the blue, he sent me the skateboard. I'm I'm just blown away, and he's uh, it's limited edition. They did a run of 190 of them, and he said he had a few that he set aside for his personal stash. And I don't know if you can see it on here, but yeah, he signed. autographed it, and it yeah. uh, it's Kevin Staub, and it says KP number one. So this is the number one from his personal stash that he had a couple set. I'm mind blown. Like, who am I? Like, I'm just some guy making content, nostalgic stuff. And your childhood heroes see it and are stoked by it and want to like share the stoke with you and like, Hey, here, let me share the skateboard. Like I'm mind blown. So no cooler Kevin story. Stop, bro. One of the <laughs> coolest guys back then and the coolest guys today. Yeah. That's amazing, dude. I love that. Yeah. I think yeah. I would say, I think my favorite from that era, Rodney Mullen. Of course. Uh, just, yeah. I mean, you can't, I, I wasn't a big Tony Hawk fan then. Um, I think I was more of a Christian to soy just because of his swagger, you know what yeah. I mean? And, no doubt. Uh, yeah. I, I really, I just really loved like his style and his attitude and I don't know, man. I just like that dude a lot. Not as coppice was another one that it was just like mm -hmm. a powerful skater that I really liked. Um, if, if someone watching this wanted to get back into like the, the repop, uh, you know, decks of eighties, like, like if, Mm -hmm. a big bike BMX person is like, dude, I, I have like a repop GT like you did. Um, I always wanted a GT, but now I always wanted a Tony Hawk, you know, or a Christian Hasoy deck. Mm -hmm. Where, where do you start your, your 
nostalgic skateboarding uh, adventures? Where do you, where would you recommend? In terms of like picking out a deck, like where to. Just where researching. To... Yeah. Like finding like nostalgic. Cause if I were to want a deck, I don't want one mm -hmm. from the eighties because I don't oh, want to yeah, pay a yeah. bazillion dollars. I, yeah, I just so, want like one that looks like. Yeah. That. They have um, so reissues just like in bikes, but probably way more in skateboards are pretty common. So they'll reproduce. So they'll do it two ways. One is they'll reproduce the graphics, those classic graphics on a more modern shape, right. and, or they'll do those classic graphics on a traditional shape like it right. used to be. And um, yeah, the, the deal is, is right. The, those 80s shapes didn't have a lot of concave in them and the nose was really flat. Right. And uh, the reason they evolved towards like the modern popsicle, like with the upturned nose and stuff is it, there's a reason it just performs better. Right. And so you can either get an old school board that's true to the eighties for the nostalgia. Um, and that's totally valid. And I have one, a Steve size deck. It's from Palo Peralta. It would have originally been re uh, produced, I think like 89, maybe 1990, something like that. Um, and I love it, but it's just harder to skate. And so, um, you can go that route or they just have like, they call them pool and park decks. I don't, I don't have it here with me. Um, but I got a new one a couple of weeks ago and they're wider. They're like, you know, nine to 10 inches wide. Um, but they will have a little bit of shape. They're not totally symmetrical, like a popsicle stick board and right. they'll have the nose. And so they give you kind of the best, like the old school vibes, they're bigger and more stable, but they're a lot more functional. And so, right. um, but if you're just like, it's kind of like BMX bikes, right? Um, a 26 inch bike outside or 29 outside of people like you who actually can rip and do flatland tricks on a big yeah. bike like that. Most guys are just riding those bikes for cruising around. They're not doing tricks and, you know, getting too aggressive. And so those old school boards are still there. You know, if you just want to ride a skateboard around, they're yeah. totally, they're totally fine. But yeah, most shops, either like your local skate shop, they usually the local skate shops because they're in business to like pay the bills. They don't cater to us old guys. They cater to the, you know, the teens. So they're sure. often not going to have as many. You might be lucky in your area if there's a shop that kind of caters to old guys. But online, usually like places like so SoCal Skate Shop or Old Old Skull Skateboards, um, they'll have a section on their site that's like reissues, and you can just yeah. browse through. But yeah, uh, Powell Peralta they do a re-release. It's about once a year now, and they're limited of like a few hundred, I think, each. But they'll re-release all of the Bones Brigade members' deck. So they'll do Tony Hawk and Mike McGill and Steve Caballero and you know. Uh, They'll do Rodney Mullen and um, Lance Mountain and uh, uh, Tommy Guerrero. So they'll do that nice. series every. So if you miss it, I think the last one was in like June or something. But if you miss it, they'll do it again next spring. Um, and then cool. Santa Cruz, they're always reproducing a lot of their like Rob Roskop and Nottis and um, a lot of those Jeff Kendall, those classics on there. So yeah. it's pretty easy to find them. And then, um, don't, yeah, it's on my board. Um, actually, here, let me grab it. Yeah, dude. The Steve Size over here. Because this is worth pointing out if you're interested in getting a cruiser board or whatever. So this this here is a reproduction uh, from Powell Peralta. These are easily, you can get this for like 80 bucks for the deck. But this is what I mean by it, it has the flat nose and, and it's short. So it, your foot kind of slides up. But um, anyway, these wheels right here, I don't know if you can see um, on the camera. Powell Peralta, yeah. Yeah, they're Powell Peralta. And in the 80s, they had a, a version called the, the Rat Bones, and they were hugely popular. And these are in that shape. They're 60 millimeters, but they're in this modern formula called Dragon's uh, Formula. And they're 93A, and so they're soft and cushy, but they have a really high rebound, and they, like, perform pretty well at the skate park. They're not as good as like modern skate park wheels if you're riding on smooth concrete, but if you're riding like outside on the streets or like, man, these wheels. So I highly recommend if you're going to get an old school skateboard and you want to go like big wheels, getting these rat bones in the dragons formula from Powell Peralta. That's a, a definitely a, a good move. Dude. I have to have those soft wheels, brother. Like that, that vibration on my ankle and feet, <laughs> like from, uh -huh. from street wheels or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. I would, I gravitated towards like, okay, what's, what do you have for like Masonite? Cause they were like, Oh, this is just for ramps. And I'm like, 
I don't care if it chops my my wheels up like faster. I mm -hmm. need comfort. And so soft wheels, dude, was <laughs> yeah. like that was my jam. Yeah. Uh, so I mean it's a trade-off because if you're at the skate park and you're skating in a bowl or whatever, the soft wheels, they're not as fast. So right. you have to pump harder or in some cases where there's just too much space between the, the ramps or walls that you're carving on, you just lose your speed and it yeah. it sucks. But um yeah, but if you're cruising around the, the neighborhood, these dragons formula and the rat bones shape are amazing wheels. Dude, I, yeah, I'm I'm at a good level of like insurance deductible. I don't need to, I'm not going to be introducing skateboarding into my life. I, but I do I do like the idea of having like decks. I, I think yeah. that's just fun because it was like, I mean, I, I what I had a I had a Rob Roscop and I remember it was on sale. It was like the stupidest. I think it was like foam core. I had one of those. It was Did a you? foam core yeah it was like fiberglass on the outside like a really yes. hard plastic and then like if you didn't use a tailbone and you got the razor tail it, you could see the foam and, and then the tail it eventually snapped the tail broke off on it every time I totally yeah. had that yeah i that was like my skateboard and so i i just was not good at it i remember i tried to ollie up a curb lost my balance went backwards hit my head Ooh. Dude, the the gnarliest concussion I've ever had. Like I sat there, I was like, I'm gonna die right here, like on the sidewalk in front of my apartment <laughs> yeah. complex, dude. And so I got up. I was like, my bell got rung. Uh, yeah, I was, dude. I think I threw up. It was bad, dude. I was like, wow. skateboarding's not for me. I was huh. like, I'll just do tail whips over here. <laughs> dude, I wanted to show you the the. So one of the things Matt and I have talked about before were these these bicycle yes, models yes, yes. that we found in the UK. Um I'm I'm super kind of bummed out dude because I haven't opened this box. I got this for Father's Day and I haven't opened this box since I since I got it. And so the rear triangle is a little bit bent on here. Oh no, yeah. I'm sure outs. once you get the wheel in there it'll push back. I'm up. sure. But so here is the frame. These are these are models that a guy 3D uh, prints. This is the Haro Master. It's got the double top tube. It's got the dropouts in the back. Awesome. They're highly detailed. I mean, the dropout or the the big gusset in the front. Uh, you should definitely, when you air this, go to that that Facebook group. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And because some you'll be scrolling through and you'll. See, like I'll think it's a real bike as I'm, I'm like, Oh, it's a sick dude, car. And it turns out, no, that's a model. Like, yeah. I saw one of those dudes. He took his bike to a skate park and took a picture like on coping and things like that. And with yeah. the cement under it, I was like, yeah, that looks real. Yeah. But like, here's their mags, dude. I mean, they're, they're legit. The tire comes yeah. off. Right. So oh wow, you, have yeah. to, you can paint it and color and like, you get to choose the, the tire that you you like that you get. So I think these uh, are the, like the tread pattern. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Here's the uh, the little like the stand. bike stand. Uh, here's I I got it with. <laughs> you get to choose the parts. So I got a, a red line stem with G, I think GT bars. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just it's kind of cool the way it works, dude. It just kind of floats. And you can pick the Amy grips or the Oakley or, or right. OEI yeah. or whatever. It's, yeah. You know, Slides in there. The bars are going to be kind of Chicago, but you can adjust <laughs> that. Um, and then, I mean, dude, in the the small parts bag, I mean, there's pedals, grips. I so want to do that. Yeah, dude, I I just don't know how it works. I mean, there's even there's a piece of metal down here that you you kind of you shape it, but this plastic is the is that brake for the cable. brake cable? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, dude. it's really it's it's really detailed. I don't know how to make models. Um, he had to has the water decals set. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and there there is an entire like instruction sheet with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just I don't have the time. I don't have glue. <laughs> like I just <laughs> dumb things do where I'm like, let me just give you all the excuses why I can't make this model. Um, but yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's pretty interesting to see like how how they go together and and I'm trying to give you guys just an idea what the scale. Is. I think they said they're one six scale ratio to I think so, yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can open this drop out enough to get the wheel in. But essentially open it up a little that's bit. That's amazing more. that that's 3D printed. Like Yeah, I mean 
I can only imagine the time he, it took him to model it and get it just, you know, print one and be like, oh, this is off or, or what, you know, let me go back and make adjustments. Blows yeah, my yeah. mind. Absolutely blows my mind. The Just that someone thought like, yeah, man, I'm going to go through here in some CAD drawing and like, yeah, you know, like you said, like, oh yeah, this, this frame standard is just a little bit wrong. Yeah. And I wish, and oh, go, go ahead. I was going to say he, and, and all the, there's like, you could get lots of different bikes. It's not just like a Harl Master. There's yeah, they had GTs Skyways, and GTs. Rally and Skyway and like Torkers and yeah, pretty all crazy. Kind, no Hutch Trick kinds. Stars though. That's why I don't have one yet. <laughs> I wish I they yeah, I wish they made those in one eighth inch scale. And the reason is, I'll here's my show and tell is I've been making these um these uh, fingerboards here. You make those? Yeah, I made these. Um, and these are turn out to be one eighth inch scale. So they're a little smaller in scale than, than those. But yeah. I've, I've been making a whole bunch of them. Um, and I've started like the, these are the skateboards I had as a kid. Yeah. And, and I've got the, the graphics on the other side and, um, yeah, I'm going to make a, like a diorama of a skate shop and these will be hanging back on the wall like they would have as we were kids and uh, I don't have it within easy uh, reaching distance, but they've got, I've got little trucks and wheels yeah. and I'm going to make uh, like a fake display case that, that you would have had back in the day and I'll have right. them all lined up. And I just so wish I could have a BMX bike in there with it. But those ones that you showed right there, they're just a little bit too large of scale. But um, yeah, you yeah, the, the like, I, 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 I'm a geek, right? Like you talk about being a tech geek. I'm like just a nerd all around. Um, but yeah, you start with this like really th super thin veneer, just like a real skateboard. Yeah. And, um, you take five layers and you cross the grain and I've got a little 3d printed mold, like a press and you glue those veneers together and you end up with a, a blank that's like yeah. actually got the, the, you know, it's really firm. And then I use a, a graphics, you know, a vector software and I actually have a, one of those cricket machines yeah. for like cutting vinyl and um i cut a thick piece of like uh not cardboard but thick paper yeah. out with that from the design and then i use that as a template to trace it and i got a little coping saw and i cut it out sand it paint it and then yeah they're water slide decals that you can print and then you slide it right on there and um there you that have it that is wild yeah and i've made it probably about 10 or 15 of them so far but yeah, that that's is so what, cool. I'm stoked. I would love to have the BMX, like the all matching and all together. Like I'm going to do one of those BMX bikes anyway, just because like I said, I'm a nerd and I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, dude, I wish those like little trick bikes, like from. Yeah. Those flip would, tricks or whatever they were called. I think yeah. they're going to be too small though. Yeah. Because it's yeah. about, that's about the size of that, that a little bit bigger than your skateboard, but not much. Um, Dude. Okay. So, so getting back to, to BMX stuff. Sure. What was it like going to like your first Buckeye bike show? What was that like for you? Because I know you've done Hall of Fame, you've done Buckeye a couple of years, right? No, I just did Buckeye just this first time. What was that um, like but, for you? Okay, so for me, it was pretty surreal. So I don't even know how to explain it. Um, if because I had started making uh, YouTube content like a year and a half ago, um, there's not a whole lot of us who were making bike, at least consistently bike. And I'm not only bikes, but I do right. bike stuff too. And, um, yeah, there's just not a lot of us out there. So it, you get pretty, you get known relatively quickly if you're making, you know, decent content. And, sure. uh, so when I was there, people recognized me and that was like totally unexpected. I, uh, once you get to know me, I, you probably, I talk too much and stuff, but I'm fairly introverted and I'm um, not very outgoing. And so normally if I would go to something like that, I would just kind of keep to myself. But uh, people kept coming up to me and it was mind blowing. So um, for, I don't know, for a few reasons, it was like the best weekend ever. Um, number one, I would say, uh, and I, I think it's like both of us saying how we were kind of drawn to each other's content. It's like in the skateboarding world, there's a lot of us middle-aged skateboarders, like still skating. It's it's not that uncommon. It's right. pretty uncommon. I live in the suburbs of St. Louis, and like most of the dudes around here, like play golf and go fishing and and 
you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, not very many <laughs> are into skateboarding, but it's not that uncommon. Um, and, but bikes, it seems like if you're a middle-aged guy who's really into BMX bikes, that's a lot more uncommon. It's pretty rare. And Right. so when you find somebody who shares that passion, you just have this instant connection where you're just like, whoa, you know. And so when you go to a group like that and there's so many people who like share that passion and just like you were saying, like you, you're sharing all the stories. Oh, I remember this bike or I watched this movie or we did this thing and everybody just there's this instant connection and it's like your best friends within like a couple of minutes. And that happened just nonstop the whole uh, we, you know, we had two basically two full days. And um, it was amazing. So that aspect was really cool. Just the community, the BMX community is so tight knit. Um, that was awesome. The, the other fun thing is, is um, so uh, leading up to it. So you had the, the guys who organized it, you know, you had uh, Jamie and Alan and Trent on your channel a little bit before, and they announced the uh, Mike Miranda doing the Hollywood to 26 inch hutch and kind Yeah. of, To commemorate or like partner with that as a sponsor or whatever for the event and i was like dude it would be really cool to get one of those 26 inch hollywoods and then take it to the bike show and get uh mike miranda to sign it and so that i just convinced myself that that was the right thing to do <laughs> and Right, so because right. i don't need another bike but i did it anyway but here's the fun part is then uh so mike miranda was there and then eddie fiola was there as well and and then i realized well if Fetty's going to be there. I got to bring the blue, the 26 inch GT because he Right. helped design the, the performer. And I was like, I got to get Eddie to sign the blue one and Mike to sign the, the lavender one. So uh, my wife uh, would, was going to come along with me. She does a lot of like if I'm out and about, she's a sweetheart. Yeah. will humor me and grab some video or whatever. And I was like, will you go on this ride out with me? There's going to be a couple hundred people riding bikes. And she was like, man, yeah, sure. Why not? And she's got like a mountain bike hybrid. That's like 25, this like old crappy bike. And so she Yeah. wanted to ride that. And I was like, is there any way you could ride this pink or the lavender Hollywood? And she didn't want to do it. And I was like, well, let's just go ride around the neighborhood and you could get a, and she, you know, you know, whatever she agreed. And within like five minutes, she was like, this bike feels like the way I remember riding bikes as kids. And you know, before we, she's like swerving on the bike path and like riding with, you know, hands and just, That's she was awesome. loving it. And so uh, we went, you know, we did the bike show or the, the ride out and she rode the bike and she had the best time. And she was like, do they have these in St. Louis? And unfortunately, they, they don't have big bike ride outs in St. Louis. And she was like, when's the next time we can do one of these? And she was Right. blown away. And then here's the kicker. So Mike Miranda uh, rides up next to her as we're like in this, you know, hundreds of people. And he pulls right up to her because it's the Hollywood bike. And he's like, Right. you win. And she's like, and he's like, that is the most beautiful. And he was just like so friendly and Yeah. uh, chatting. And then the whole rest of the weekend, whenever we would like see him, like, you know, signing autographs and we did the the dinner and stuff, he was calling her Hollywood. Oh, And she'd that's he'd great. be like, see you later, Hollywood, you know? And so she just felt like, yeah, it was amazing. So I know that's a little bit, like I said, if you get me going, I'll just keep talking or whatever. But that I love weekend, it. like that was like... The, We started it off. They did a showing of the movie Rad with uh, Eddie and Mike both. And, and Eddie would be like acting, acting, you know, fast forward. And then when it'd be bike stuff, he'd stop and he'd tell like, here's what they had me do. Because Eddie Fiola did uh, most of all of the stunt doubles for Crew Jones. So anytime you saw Right. Crew Jones, for the most part, it was him. There were a couple of scenes like the, the BMX, uh, what do they call it? The... BMX The dancing, boogie. the BMX Yeah. boogie or whatever. I think that was Martin Aparijo and, and not um, Eddie Fiola. But he would just tell these really cool stories. And then Mike would chime in with his stories. And it was so fun to, to see that movie through their eyes. And um, yeah, then the next day was the bike show and just a ton of bikes. Um, and just the, the energy in there was amazing. They had the Flatland Jam that was organized by the uh, the Cincinnati crew. They've got a, a big group of Flatland riders. And so there were a whole bunch of guys just still tearing it up. And again, it's a small community and people like kind of know each other and they're all so friendly and humble. Um, I don't know if you know Gary Pollock Yeah. and uh, Joe Sisman and um, Chris Wong, like guys who were like doing it back in the day, but are still like, they just came up to me and were like, hey, I saw your thing or whatever. And I'm like, 
you know, and it's like amazing how open and like encouraging I was at Tulsa the last weekend, or I guess the weekend before last and Brett Downs of eighties, uh, pro freestyler. He came up and introduced himself and he was like, just so encouraging. He's like, you gotta take my bike for a spin. You know, you gotta, you know, gotta ride it. And Yeah. uh, I rode it for a, a couple of minutes before I hurt myself. But, um, these guys, like, these are the guys that like, We're really doing it back in the day. Of course, you got the big names like Eddie Fiola and Brian Byther, you know, all the others there. But um, these guys were the ones who were still doing it in the 90s. And they're still like riding at a high level now. And they're like so humble and like wanting like, dude, if you like show any interest in riding a bike, everybody's encouraging you to like get on it. Let's go. And it's just wild. Like I didn't do Flatland really as a kid. And there's a group in St. Louis of flatland riders and I've gotten plugged in with them and they meet once a month. They, they all ride more than that, but there's a once a month, a flatland jam and I'll show up and I can't do crap. And like, it'll take me like 20 or 30 minutes and I'll, I'll do a tail whip. And, but like the first time I got it, they all treated me like I was Tony Hawk laying in the first 900, like, Right, like right. they could all do it in their sleep with their eyes closed. You don't want a hand tied behind their back and the easiest, most simple thing to them, but they treated me like, You know, it was, it, was, it was just, I love it. Like the BMX community is so awesome. Dude, And Flatland, that weekend Flatland's was awesome just like that. all, all of that. Like it was really a fun weekend for Yeah, sure. I love that too. Mike, Mike Miranda is, he's a, he's an absolute gift Oh to yeah. Yeah. the world. Like that guy is, if you meet him once, you have like a new best friend forever, For sure. forever. Yeah. He, he's, I, I he believe is fantastic. it. That's the way Um, our experience, like, Yeah, who are we? Just some nobodies. But at the end of yeah. the weekend, he was, you know, my wa my wife was Hollywood to him. Right, <laughs> crazy. I, it, it's like that. Like I, 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 I hope you as a viewer watching this, you know, takes this away and understands this. Like when you meet a lot of a lot of them, like Mike and Eddie and people like that, like it is truly like a family thing. Like they Mm -hmm. they are absolutely engaging and. I mean, Mike, there's no reason for Mike Miranda to know my daughter's name and her interest, but like he'll, if I see him next time I see him, he'll be like, mm -hmm. how's your daughter's, you know, uh, violin going, you know, and, or he'll, Yeah. he'll sing the song that, that she played for him. It's amazing. Um, Yeah. and, and it's just wild like that too. Dave Norrie is another one that's like that. If you ever get the chance to meet Dave Yeah. Norrie, I have not met him, but, um, I would love to. Yeah. I watch, he's, I see a lot of his content online and he's, yeah. He still has so much energy and doing such really cool stuff at high. He, uh, right. He just released some, I guess this past summer or whatever, a uh, flatland frame from uh, reclamation. This beautiful looks like a kind of an old school Haro from back in the day. Same And like, color. Yep. yes, it's, it's like a really bright neon green. And uh, a couple guys were riding them at the Tulsa show a couple of weeks Yeah. ago. Yeah. And it's like, I don't need another bike, but <laughs> Dude, I, I kind of want that. <laughs> I love it. I love like there's, there's two, I think uh tech by co and reclamation Um, Mm -hmm. tech by co, I think has a trident. Yeah. It's a The very guys, cool looking frame. there's a few guys here in St. Louis. Um, I made a video actually a couple of weeks ago with this uh, guy. He goes by peeps is his, his, his name, real name's Chris. Um, he rides still at a really high level and, um, he was riding a uh, general Osborne that he had since like 1989 or something like that. And he finally got a new school and it was this trident and, Yeah. uh, he rides it so well. And, uh, it is a beautiful bike. I kind of want one of those too. They're they're nice, dude. Yeah, Yeah. both both like anytime you see like bespoke like super small quantity frame companies like that that are just like feeding the flatland community. I love that because Mm-hmm. I that's kind of what it felt like when I was younger with like Ozone. Ozone was like not a they weren't like the big company like a GT or a Haro or a Mongoose or it was like this little frame No one really knew about Yeah, it. You yeah. know, you know, a couple of flatlanders had it, you know, and it, it might have just been a NorCal thing, but like they were everywhere in NorCal, like Hmm. everyone got ozone. Yeah, yeah. And it's because you can get them out of the, I mean, the the factory was there in San Jose, so you can get them for like pennies. You could go up. Mm -hmm. Some dude in the back of the factory was like, yeah, dude, how much, you know, a hundred bucks. Yeah, Cool. whip Here's one up. a, here's a bike. Bring That's your car around. yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. but What would you, what would you, is there for advice on anyone watching this? It's like, man, I really like blank. I have a hobby of 
maybe there's someone that's in that, that's watching because we showed that bike model and they're like, I love modeling. I love nostalgia. Is there any things that you've learned creating your, your channel that you would share? Like, Hey, here's, here's my number one piece of advice. Uh, in terms of like creating a channel, like creating yep, starting, content and stuff. Becoming a yeah. creator. I would, um, so the, the, I guess it kind of feels like somebody like they're, their biggest, like they, they're interested. They like, oh, I think that would be fun. I'd like to do that. But then they're like, well, who am I? Or like, what would I, like, how am I going to compete with, with, you know, Isaac at big bike BMX? He's got such a great chance. He's got all these, you know, uh, historical legendary writers that he interviewed. Like, who am I? What, who's going to want to watch my stuff? And the reality I feel like is there's, there's such a demand for, like nostalgic stuff or even just modern, you know, bikes or whatever by us older guys, there's just not enough of it. Like, right. There's just not like any week. There's a few people like Kevin at cruising in the 808 who are on a weekly basis producing content and then yourself. But beyond that, there's, there's a couple of newer guys like Wagner over at um, BMX freestyle fanatic. I, if you haven't seen his stuff, he's uh, he's got just, I think he's right around hitting a thousand subscribers in like six months. I met him at, at the um, Buckeye show. He's doing really fun stuff. Um, exam another, just example of a guy who just like, I'm going to do it. And he did. So, um, uh, yeah. So anyway, the, the point is, is that, you know, if you've got something that you want to share, go for it. Don't, uh, don't think that you, nobody will want to watch it because there's a gazillion people out there and there's just not enough content. And so, um, I mean, obviously you can't just put crap out and expect people that you got to put some thought into it. And so that would be number one is if you think you want to do it, go for it. The number two thing I see, at least with a lot of people creating bike content is they just, they're like, they show off their really cool bike and it's just like, they're going to pan around and it's like, that's cool. And we love seeing your bike and you can flex with your bike and all of that. But tell us the story. Like, why, why did you pick that over something else? Or what challenges did you find, you know, did it take you to get it or put it together? Or how did you feel when you first, you know, like tell a story and engage us with it? And so many people, they just want to show their, their, you know, they, they don't tell the story. And I feel like that's, um, where some of the other guys, uh, have the ability to uh, spend a lot of money on the next bike or the next thing that they're building or the next part. Right. And I just can't sustain that. Like I'm not, this isn't a business. This is just a hobby for me. I have a day job. And so um, for me, it's easier to tell a story or at least try than it is to just go buy a new bike and Hey guys, let's put the bike together. And, and there's nothing like, kudos to those guys. Cause I watch all of that, you know, I right. love watching, uh, cruising in the 808 and Kevin and Bernie is they're just chit chatting, feeling like you're one of the bros in the garage with them. And it's like, love what's it. the next project? What are they working on? I, I love it. Um, but I just can't keep up. Like, yeah, I would go broke. I, w I would too. If you, I mean, dude, yeah. you look at my bikes, it's literally the same, the same parts. I just transplant them onto mm -hmm. the next frame. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's now I tell you that you're going to be like, Oh yeah, oh, dude, I, I see that. that. It's the same. <laughs> but I mean, for me, dude, the joy, the joy for bikes is riding bikes and, and sharing stories about riding bikes. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want mm -hmm. to, I want to know why you're building that bike. Like there's two things that will turn me off really quick. The, this, the storyless bike video, which to me, I'm like, I'm just going to interpret that as a forward presenting flex. Like, you're right. Yep. Here's look at how much money I could spend on a bike. And I understand that that vibe and I understand people that are like that's that's how they want to present and that's the the social media mm -hmm. thing that they that's what they're going after. It's just not for me. And but if you tell me like hey, this is a bike that I spent you know 80 100 hours like picking the parts and really sourcing these this specific part like you're going to suck me into that story. Yeah, tell me the story like and yeah, I'll be into it. I hear you. Um, and the other one that turns me off too is just if if you if this is a business for you, then like if if every if every video and every content is like, and this is something that I've done, and this is one of my followers, and it's gonna turn me off right away. Like if you're like ride your bike, dude, ride mm -hmm. your bikes. Show me you riding a bike. Um, I I would tell I would tell you the same advice, man. I would say, do not. You're going to have, I think I told Kevin, Kevin, and, and mm -hmm. like when he was on, but 
there's an angel and a devil on your shoulder giving you advice all day long, your self-talk. Your self-talk when it comes to like making a YouTube video and making a channel is going to tell you who the hell are you? Like, why, why would anyone right. care? And I can, all I'll tell you is that people care. If you are interested in making bridges out of toothpicks, you will find an audience of people that would love to talk to you about your designs and your ideas. If you like BMX bikes, you will find a bunch of people that will share their opinions on BMX bikes. Um, if you're into skateboarding, you will find people. If you just had a channel on miniature skateboards, you will build a community around people that are yeah, just for sure. yeah. stoked on miniature skateboards. So if you're thinking of doing this, please do it. Just start making videos. You don't have to be good. My first video was an iPhone that I edited on iMovie. In fact, all the interviews that you saw in 2020 were edited with iMovie. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you have everything you need to, to make a YouTube channel. That was the same. Yeah. Most of my stuff was iPhone until last fall. Yeah. Uh, and then I use, uh, if um, it's called DaVinci Resolve yeah. for video editing, and they have a free version, and I used that for like over a year and then they have a paid version that's like uh, 300 bucks that's it like forever uh, the like a lot of the pros love the adobe uh, premiere but it's like 40 or 50 bucks a month for the subscription and you just got to pay it forever um but yeah the davinci resolve they have a free version and it's great it would do everything you need to do but what i love about the paid one is i'll get compl uh, compliments is i'll i'll like uh put like words back behind my head or whatever. And it has this thing called magic mask and you just draw over your face and you say, I want this part to be a layer. And then you um, just copy that on, you know, on the track, you can have two layers of the same video playing and you make one of them. It just masks out. It just makes everything else background. Yeah. And then you just put a picture or image or whatever in between the layers. And then all of a sudden you got like stuff happening behind you. And it's like, it's the easiest thing. Like you just, doesn't takes, take you know, much. It takes 10 minutes to learn how to do it on the, the software. But yeah, you uh, free software out there. Use your phone. Yeah. Uh, audio would probably be good if you could pick up a, a decent microphone. Um, that would be the probably for me. And then some lighting if your room isn't or dark or wherever you're at. Yeah, like it. this. Probably, like you don't want this. Yeah, <laughs> I would get a microphone before I'd get anything other than like a, a phone or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice, dude. I, I love DaVinci Resolve. I use both. So at work, I okay. use Premiere. And then at home, like this will be edited on DaVinci Resolve. Okay, and I was cool, the same yeah. way. I used the free one forever. Um, I bought the the extra one to get like the, some extra transitions um, mm -hmm. and some extra fusion stuff. But yeah, there's also uh, there's lots of free cool plugins that you can grab that will you, it's it's kind of funky to install, um, but you can get them installed so that your your fusion has like kind of adds a little bit of After Effects stuff to it, which mm -hmm. is kind of yeah, cool. for sure. Um, uh the but, other cool thing yeah. with uh, DaVinci Resolve, the paid version, not that this is a commercial for it, but this is a common problem that people have. Uh, either here, like in Missouri, um, the cicadas were just terribly loud. This And if I did anything outside, it was just, just these crazy insect sounds. And Resolve on the paid version has an AI algorithm that will isolate your voice and remove that type of noise and I've made reels and stuff. You can't tell that I, that they were like the, the on and off feature is just mind blowing. It's and crazy. then it, um, on YouTube, right. Um, you can't have other people's copyrighted music in your background if you want to make money, like get monetized and you'll get copyright struck. And so if you're at like Buckeye Bike Show or somewhere or anywhere, your local event and they're blaring music and you're recording it, you can't share that video with the music or else you'll get copyright striked. And this DaVinci Resolve, not always, but sometimes you can get the music out of the background and it'll still have the voices of people talking, which yeah. to me, like, that's like a game changer. Like, yeah. Yeah. If you can, if you can get most of the, if you can get most of the, uh, the, the music out and you're talking over the, the song you usually mm -hmm. won't get the strike. Yeah. Yeah. You just, as long as you consistently talk over it. And I, there's like, I don't know what the decibel level is, but yeah, you don't have to worry about it getting perfect. And 
there's a lot of times, man, when I'll just take the strike because the content was worth it. You know yeah, what I mean? There's yeah, times when I'm, I'm not just gonna like, make whatever. any money on this one, but it was too good not to share type of yeah. Thing, you I'll know? I'll pass on that twelve dollars <laughs> that I made on this <laughs> yeah, episode. Right. And uh just because it's worth it. So yeah, I think well, the most I've made for context is like maybe like forty dollars on a video that had like forty thousand views or something like that. So yeah. I'm making like 150 bucks on average, probably. I do yeah. four videos on average uh, a month and they get anywhere between like 750 and maybe two or 3,000 views. And then I'll get about 150 bucks. Yeah. The amount of time I put into it is like, I could make 10 times as much working at Home Depot <laughs> in Dude, the evenings 100%. or something. Yeah. If, if I'm it was a... not doing it for money, it's just for fun. If it was a money making adventure, um, I would definitely have a channel about something else, probably about weight loss or fitness yeah. or football or something that gets or politics is probably right now like the hottest thing. And, you know, like it, it's I think my my what I make off of my YouTube pays for the hosting fee for my podcast because I don't mm -hmm. make any money on the audio podcast, but I like people listen to it and they they're like, yeah, listen to it on the way to work and this and that. So I keep that one going, but I just use like the, the money from YouTube to pay that hosting fee. Yeah, right. Just reinvest you know? and, it. Yeah. And then I'll just save up for a new camera or a new mic or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm saving up obviously for lights. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm just at a computer all day. So I keep it as dark as possible because it just kills my eyes. But yeah. Um, dude, what would you say? And, and I'll, we'll end on this one, but mm -hmm. Uh, if you were, you know, like, where do you want to see Nostalgic Neighborhood in the next, like, year, two years? What's mm -hmm. your goal for it? Is there, is there anything, it's, like, do you want to do interviews? Do you want, what's going to, what does success look like to you? It's funny because I already, I, I, I set out to, my one goal was to uh, build that Hutch Trickstar and make a build <laughs> video of it. And from the day I started the channel to the day I actually did the video of like building the bike was like a year because there was one piece. I wanted to wait till I got the stem and he said it was going to be released and he just kept delaying it. And doing, and I was just like, you know, whatever, I'll just wait, I'll wait. And right. then, so my whole channel exists because <laughs> the, the dude star. took like a year and a <laughs> half to release that part. And I was just like, I made the unboxing and I thought I'd be making the build video like a month or two later. And right. I was like, Oh, I'll make another video. I'll make another. And then before you knew it, I was just making tons of videos. And so my goal was just to keep going until I built the bike. Um, so that I met the goal. So I don't really know what the next goal is, but I, I guess I don't know how to do it, but to me, like you could sh hopefully see the excitement or at least the stoke I was sharing about the Buckeye show. For and sure. I, this the community aspect and just how, you know, when you find somebody who loves bikes like we do and is just excited about it, you just have this connection. And so I don't know how to do it, but I would love to bring some of that community into the online space. And I know there's Facebook groups and there's the BMX museum, but I don't know. They just, they're there's angry. something about them where they just, they're not, they're impersonal or it's guys just bickering with each other. It's they're like, angry. It's to, they're real. It's an angry community yeah. for sure. And I would love, uh, so the idea of the nostalgic, you know, the neighborhood taking that neighborhood that vibes that we had as kids and making that some sort of like a virtual community where, you know, people are connecting and, um, I'd love to do, figure out how to do more live, like interacting with, with enthusiasts instead of just it being one way, um, like, are you and I talking back and forth, but how do we have conversations that people can participate in like yeah. more in real time? Make a discord, bro. Make a discord. Yeah. I'll join it. I think I yeah. would love to chat with your fans. Like, cause I think there's just that there's absolutely like a shared interest. And in, if someone's going to join your discord, they're going to like this same stuff that I like. They're going to yeah. like garbage pail kids. They're going to like, I love garbage know, pail kids. Yeah, dude, sure. 80 cereal. I mean, mm -hmm. dude, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about that I just didn't get around to asking you. Like, yeah. what was your favorite McDonald's toy, dude? Like, because <laughs> I have strong <laughs> feelings, dude. Like, the play, <laughs> yeah, the play I think for me, dude, mine was like uh, uh, the glasses that were t like movie tie-ins. Those like, mm -hmm. I don't know, vessels, like the little <laughs> drinking glassware, drinkware. Yeah, you know, probably they were like so the, fragile. <laughs> the most nostalgic, like I, I, you could get them on eBay, and I probably will at some point, but. uh 
man, they had those Dukes of Hazard Happy Meal containers. I don't know if you remember that, where No, it was like, dude. it was plastic, like a thin plastic. And uh, that was, your meal came inside of that. So it was like on a little tray and then like the lid of the frame, like, you know, like an RC car has like that For plastic, sure, dude. you know, Yeah. it's like that would go over it. You'd pop it open, eat your meal and put it together. It didn't have wheels that rolled, but, Right. you know, and they had boss, you know, what was it? Cleet what was the guy? Roscoe P. Cole train, you know, they had Yeah. his car and the general Lee and they had the, 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 what are you, Daisy's the, the Jeep. Jeep, Daisy Dukes Jeep. Oh. And they had all of that. And man, I, I would love to, you put your stickers on in the whole nine yards. That, that was I one love of my favorites. that stuff. Yeah. I love that stuff. Do you like the And Mark? the stompers, you remember those stompers vehicles? Um, Was it they were the like air little push? four by four trucks and like the real ones that weren't in the happy meals, they, you put like a double a or triple a battery in them. And, you know, they, they kind of had maybe a little bit of a foamish wheel. Um, but then McDonald's, I don't probably around 83 or 80, somewhere between 83 and 85. I don't know, but they made stompers, happy meal toys. And, um, I'd love to get some of those again too. I yeah I think mine were the the, the glasses. Anytime they had a Star Wars tie in, for sure, Mm-hmm. dude. I and and at the re release, dude, I went hard at Taco Bell too because I did they too. were Yeah. they were giving away a, a Star Wars uh, H one, and that was my favorite truck Okay. back in the day, dude. Growing up, I I ended up buying one and sold it because I Sick. hated it. Yeah. I hated it <laughs> after I had Oh one, no. dude. It was like. Let me just make, I live in a cul-de-sac, dude. And I'm like, let me just make this 38 point turn just to turn the truck around. I'll be back in 10 minutes. That's fine. You know, it was, it's horrible too, but Yeah. they were giving away like a Hummer dude. And I was like, and obviously now I've, you probably was scammed by the same thought, like by the same monopoly guy, but Yeah, nobody, that Monopoly guy story was pretty wild. Yeah. wasn't that crazy dude? Yeah. Oh my God. That one. And did you watch the documentary about the dude that got the, the airplane from Pepsi? Yes, I did. Or he didn't Dude, actually get it. he got paid like he got paid like a million dollars or something. Though. He got money out of it. Yeah, I don't know. I re I watched that. He didn't. It was a was it a helicopter? No, it was an airplane. Harry. It was an airplane. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that was a cool story. That was a Dude, cool. Yeah. don't mess with nerds, man. They know Yeah, math. don't mess with <laughs> <laughs> and hey, nerds who have friends with money because that was right. like yeah. Yeah, some dude with a grudge against Pepsi was just like, I got you. Here, I, I hear you want six hundred thousand dollars to buy all these cans of Pepsi so you <laughs> could trade them in for points or or whatever it was, right? It was right. like he did the math and it was like It's it would cheap. cost Yeah. like like two million dollars to get an eight million dollar jet or something crazy like that. It was Right, yeah. dude. Yeah. What a guy, man. I love that. The underdog story will get me every single time, For man. sure. Um, All right. Speaking of eighties, I do want to share one more thing because this was another cool thing at Tulsa. Um, and then we can wrap up however you want to wrap up, but Yeah, dude. right. So we, we talked, you know, serials and movies and, and happy meals and all of that, uh, comic books. But for me, like I love trading cards. Uh, my dad and I, we collected baseball cards together. That was one of like our bonding things. And, um, but I, I also just loved all, all the tops, like the movie, you know, whether Yeah. it was star Wars cards or, or whatever. And I've been collecting, let me see if I can. Dude, yeah, show me. Because I... I collected. I'm not going to grab them all, but just for, uh, you know, just for like sake of like example or whatever. Right. Right. So we got Tron, I got Cindy Lauper. So these are just packs of wax pack and you can find these for like Oh, two or three bucks now, the uh, black black hole, hole, dude. Maximilian. uh, back to the future Rambo. Okay. So then I don't know if you remember this, but, uh, 1984, Don Russ released Oh. these BMX trading cards. And I actually had a ton of these as a kid. I don't, we were at like a baseball card show and I, I found like a stack of unopened packs and they sold them to me for cheap. And, Dude. uh, and so they, I don't know if you've seen these, but I'm just going to show you a couple of them. Yeah, who's in there? But uh, so yeah, this, this is a complete set of them. You can Okay. get a set of these on eBay now for probably 25 to $40, depending on, but they've got riders, just, uh, you know, the riders, they've got the brand. Some of them feature bikes, some of them feature, you know, riders, whatever. Um, and so I took these with me to Tulsa a couple weeks ago and um, I'm just beyond stoked. So, you know how I like the trick star. So Woody Yeah. Itzen, 
I, he was in, in the museum uh, standing next to his pink trick star that he donated. And um, while he was there, I asked him to sign this. I don't know how well that comes. Oh, through, and he, it but was a pink he, Sharpie. Yeah, I got the pink. Uh, another dude in there had a pink uh, Sharpie. And so he signed that for me. And so this is this is like the, you know, like as much as you would want to have a Hank Aaron or whoever, you know, Pete Rose that he Yeah. passed away, just passed away, but an autograph by one of those legendary baseball players. This is like Dude. my new prized possession is my Woody. It's in a 1984 Donruss card. Amazing. I'm like I love that. stoked on that. I love Yeah. that. I saw Woody. I saw Woody at the Diamondback show. So it wasn't in his Hutch era. I Okay. saw him Yeah. in like the the Diamondback. It was him and Yeah. I'm going to tell you my cringiest story of Woody Okay. Itson. Um, so in BMX Plus or or BMX Action, they would do Nora Cup voting, and you could vote for your favorite rider. And so they would say like, you know, St. Louis's Matt, right? And so it was like whatever city, and then Woody Itson. And I was like, oh, man, 411 for whatever city, like Chatsworth, Mm -hmm. uh, Derwood Itson. And she's like, hold, gave me the number. I was like, no way. Uh Whoa, uh huh. I was, I was God mode at that point with my friends because we're all sitting in my room. And uh, I was like, I have Woody Itson's phone number. And they're like, you have to call it. And I'm like, my mom will kill me. And they're like, worth it. And I was like, kind of is worth it. So I call the number Uh huh. and a dude answers. And I'm like, is this Woody Itson? <laughs> He's like, hello. I'm like, Woody Itson? He's like, yeah. I was like, and I'm like looking at like the three dudes around me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> what do I do? I was What like, do I say? I don't even remember what I, he talked. I remember he talked to me for like five minutes and he, he's like, I could hear him and his girlfriend was there and they were just cracking up, dude. Like, I can't believe there's like some 12 year old kid calling me right now. And, uh, it was hilarious, dude. Like he talked to me for like five That's amazing. minutes. That's amazing. He's like, look, man, I gotta, I gotta take off, but it was great meeting you. I was like, thanks Woody. It's in click, you know? And, Dude, it was the wildest. It was one of the wildest things, like Wow. cringiest story. But like, uh, I I tried to get him on the on the podcast when I first started, Uh huh. uh, just so I could tell him that story and see if he remembered it. But uh, he was one. Of, he's one of the ones that is like, yeah, I don't want to do an interview, but I'll I'll definitely tune in and watch my friends talk. And I was like, well, that's a classy way to say Yeah, kick yeah. rocks, dude. Uh, I, and I don't blame him. You know what I mean? Like, Uh -huh. it's not for everybody. And uh, yeah, it's fun, dude. Like. Dealing with the the nose from from like people is something when I was first started out would like Mm kind -hmm. of make you sad. You're like, oh, they don't want Yeah. to come on my show. <clears throat> they don't want to come to an interview. But trust me, you get very numb to it very quick. Like you will Mm. like my favorite writer in the whole world, dude, Martin Aprio. I was I've, I every year I ask him like, hey, dude, will you come on the show? And every year he's like, no. Nah. <laughs> but I now now it's like, hey, dude, here's your the four year anniversary of me asking you. to come on the show and it's hilarious dude i met him at dirty fest when he Mhm. was like he showed up down there and i was he's like i'm like hey what's up man he's like hey dude <laughs> super fun just to like see him uh Mm <laughs> right, in person right. dude but now it's like i almost feel like he can never come on even if he was like yeah i'll come on your show like he has to just keep saying no at this point just because it's like Just because that's the the funny way it is thing now. yeah Yeah. like but uh yeah dude you guys i i'm i'm gonna sit here and want to chat with matt forever about uh especially about cards now. Cause like, I remember on the back of my mom's Datsun, we had a Datsun when I was a kid and I had Chewy, Darth Vader, like the stickers were the inserts Mm hmm back then. And so I, I would just, Oh, I got Darth Vader Sloop, stick it to the back of the vinyl. Yeah. Whoever owns that Datsun now is like cursing me because it's permanently like <laughs> probably That's hilarious. like dyed the vinyl, the sticker, but Dude, I had like Luke, Leia, Chewbacca, Stormtrooper, Uh-huh. Vader, you know, Obi-Wan I had Kenobi. those exact same stickers on my dresser as a kid. Like Yep. I slapped them on the, I don't, my parents didn't seem to care, but yeah, No, I know exactly we which ones you're talking about. Yeah. dude, we all we all had the same, we all Yeah. had the same childhood. So that's what makes this community beautiful. That's what makes bikes awesome. The the cross, the the crossover between like bikes and skateboards and just 80s pop culture. Mm hmm Um, you guys follow Matt, follow, follow, follow Matt. You will have a great time. You can find him on Instagram at the nostalgic neighborhood. Uh, I'll link, I'll link your uh, YouTube so they can just click Sounds it great. in the description. Uh, but yeah, follow Matt. You'll have a great time. 
uh, definitely encourage him to uh, to complete that diorama because we all want to see that. <laughs> and then make a bike one next, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. You, f- you figured out how to make a deck, figure out how to make some some 3D printed bikes and yeah, make a diorama. Yeah. Maybe we might have to make that happen. I'm Thank you so much for having here. me. Like this yeah. has been, like you said, we've uh, interacted in the background on DMs and stuff for a while now. And so great to meet, you know, chat in person and share stories. Um, it was kind of pinching myself because like I said, before I even ever considered making any videos or whatever, like I was a fan of your channel, like years ago, you know, when I was like trying to rebuild that or build up, swap out the parts for that GT, like I'd watch, you know, what's Isaac and Craig up to and right. just kind of, you know, it's, it's fun. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Dude. Thanks for watching. You guys follow Matt, have a good time, go ride your bikes, follow your passion. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to build a community around whatever it is that you're stoked about. I promise you will be much happier. And eventually the devil that's like, you can't do this is going to get drowned out by all your new friends going, please make new content about X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Trust me. It's going to be a great adventure. And we want to see more. I want to see more BMX and I want to see more 80 stuff. So same here. Make it at your friends. Yeah. If you, anyone, if you do like hit us up, I'll come watch it. We'll, I will too. Yeah, we'll be your, your cheerleaders. Yeah, dude, I'm here to watch. Uh, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna let you go because I'm gonna watch some BMX freestyle fanatic. I'm gonna check out. Uh, uh, what's his? I just saw his, his name. name's Wagner. His name? Yeah, Wagner. He does I'm gonna check out Wagner. Almost stuff. all 87 GT Pro freestyle tours. So he is a little bit different, but um, yeah, you know, but it's fun. It's it's cool stuff. I'm here to look at old parts, man. I want to yeah. see how you restore them, and then <laughs> yeah. go watch Matt's video on restoring rotors. <laughs> you guys have a good time go ride your bikes do something awesome but thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next next time on big bike bmx take care everybody bye guys